And we are back guys with the final episode of this series of videos. Today we will finish the noble tunnels by painting rusty metals and adding some moss and grass to the walls and roof. And maybe some leaves. So let's jump right into it. We will start by picking out all the rivets with lead belcher color. Don't worry too much if you mess up a little, it will get covered in the next phase. If you survived painting the rivets, paint all metal elements with the same color. Next we will wash all the metal parts except the rivets with slightly watered down null oil color. Now let's weather the rivets. Pick all of the rivets with watered down Typhus Corrosion Technical Color. You don't have to be as precise as with lead belcher, in fact it is good to cover a bit of area around the rivets. This way you will cover your mistakes and get the rusty effect. You can also vary the intensity of paint to make some rivets rustier than other. Once you are done with rivets, move on to painting all of the metal parts in the same color. I like to wipe off the rusty texture from the handles. Since they are constantly used, it is less likely that the corrosion would accumulate on them. Here I'm wiping off the paint simply to make these bolts stand out more. Once the layer of watered down typhus corrosion is dry, we will use pure typhus corrosion to add more rusty texture to the parts where metal plates overlap. This will make the roof ridge look more interesting. Use water to blend the texture outwards. I use the same technique to emphasize different elements on these elaborate spikes.
we will finish our rust using pigments. We will start with darkest rust tone, old rust from MIG and apply it to the metal parts. Cover most of the surface but think about where would rust in real life accumulate and put more pigment to those areas. Most often that would be the same areas where you applied pure typhus corrosion. On the chimney concentrate on the lower parts. Next, we will apply standard rust. As you are moving to lighter rust tones, you should concentrate on smaller areas, those that are more affected with rust. It is up to you how much pigments will you apply depending on the intensity of rust you are going for. Note however that the pigments will get slightly toned down once you seal them with pigment fixer. Watch out for the residue that falls down while you apply the pigments. You don't want to smudge it with your fingers onto the model. Lower shake off the residue in controlled area. And finally, we will apply the light rust pigment to the spots that will be most affected by rust. To seal the pigments in place, we will use the pigment fixer from MIG. Apply it with a brush without doing brush strokes. You don't want to mess everything up. Just touch the surface on a few spots with a loaded brush and let the capillary effect do its work. Once the rust pigments are sealed, we will add black smoke pigment to the top of the chimney and seal it with pigment fixer again.
to make some rust streaks, take some of the old rust pigment onto your palette and mix it with water. Gradually apply it under the roof ridge and other metal parts. Be careful because you can easily overdo it. You should constantly switch between paint and pure water. You can also add this effect to some of the rivets. I decided that the rust effect turned out a bit too intense for my taste so I gave it a wash of water down A to black to tone it down. Now this is just a personal preference, you don't need to do this step. This is how it looks after the black wash. Finally, let's add some vegetation to our house. We will mix PVA glue and water in 50-50 ratio and add to it a mixture of green and burnt grass fine turf from Woodland Scenics. Mix it until you get chunky consistency. PVA glue should not be visible. Add water and more turf if needed. Pick the small chunks with your brush and apply it to the walls. Always think about where would it be most likely for vegetation to grow. Apply more closer to the ground and less moving upwards. I also like to apply it to the bigger gaps between the stones and beneath the plaster cracks. Note that the mix will be darker and better looking once it is dry. Be careful not to overdo it, otherwise your house will end up looking like it's in the middle of the jungle. On the roof I concentrate mostly around the chimney and dormers.
I also like to add some moss between the exposed planks and around nail boards. Final touch will be adding some grass tufts to the model. I like to cut thin strips of grass and use tweezers to place them in position. Then I use modeling tool to press them down. If you have tiny tufts you can use them as is, no need to cut them. Again look for the logical places to apply your grass to. Just a few for the whole building will be enough. Before the final showcase here is the closer look at the finished roof and the ground floor. And our house is finally done guys! Of course there are many different ways and styles when it comes to painting our models and this is just one of them, more gloomy and grim dark. You could for example paint the plaster more vibrant colors, make the wood lighter, paint the glass in the windows in blue as though the sky is reflected in them, or yellowish like the candle is burning inside. If you want to see different ways and styles of painting tabletop world models in the future, consider subscribing to our channel. I have been Ivan of Tabletop World, thanks for watching.